Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 25th, and it's a pretty nice day here for uh, late August uh, here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Not too hot, not too cool. We'll take it. So today I'm going to smoke the tobacco of the month, chosen by you, the Friday night viewers of the uh, live stream. Uh, and I struggled with this one this week uh, because... Or this month, I should say, because uh, I got some misinformation on this blend from you, the viewers of the Friday Night Live Stream. Uh, so this is Newminster number four hundred three Superior Round Slices. This was uh, purchased in March of twenty twenty two, or at least it was put in this jar in March of twenty twenty two. Anyway, not very old. Uh, I'm 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 curious about that date because I don't remember buying this, so I don't know how I got it in March of 2022. Anyway, um, I was told, I believe, and I haven't gone back and watched the live stream, but I think several folks agreed that this was a burly Oriental blend, um, and I struggled with it. I I could not find it. Se it, it seemed to me like it was very very heavy Oriental with very little burly. And, and it really needed something else. I even thought maybe it needed Virginia because uh, it just was lacking something. And, and then I really, it doesn't have that sourness that I would get from a blend that was that heavy in the Oriental. So I just couldn't find anything in this. And I didn't look anything up or, you know, do any research on it because I like to try to sort it out for myself. Anyway, I looked yesterday at Tobacco Reviews and found out that it's not a Burley Oriental blend at all. <laughs> this is actually a an attempt, I guess you could say, at a Three Nuns knockoff. It's a Virginia Dark Fired Kentucky. Uh, you can see it's these nice coins, very similar to Three Nuns, uh, also similar to Luxury Bullseye Flake in some regards, and that's what kind of got us off on this uh, whole stream of it being a an attempt to replicate luxury bullseye flake on the live stream uh, but I, I really think it's more of an attempt to replicate three nuns or maybe it's just an independent tobacco that's got nothing to do with trying to replicate anything but uh, there you have it so some of the reviews reviews said it was like three nuns with dark fired Kentucky instead of Perique which of course is what three nuns is now uh, some of them have a core, some of them don't. It's kind of interesting. Like, that guy doesn't really have much of a core. And then you get ones where it's just very, very prominent. Like, maybe it's not that obvious to you. That looks very prominent to me. Anyway, I've smoked quite a bit of this trying to sort it out. I think I finally understand it now. <laughs> so we're going to pack a bowl. I've got, I've got a couple bowls left. Uh, and I can tell you without uh, too much uh, giveaway or spoilers here that I'm probably not going to be buying more of this. Not a bad blend, just not my thing. And I'm just doing a direct uh, bold and press here. I'll show you how I'm packing this in case anybody cares. I'm taking two of these coins, like so, holding them in half, and then as they go down in, I'm sort of using some force to kind of break them. Uh, seems to work fairly well. And by the time I'm done with that, because of the way I'm moving my finger around, I mean, you saw I just pushed those flakes in. But what I've got is basically, it looks almost like it's a, it's going to be hard for you to see that without, but there we go. It looks almost like it's a ribbon cut pack. And plenty of uh, airflow at the bottom because those lower flakes while they broke up they didn't compress as much so you get something that's easy to light and then something that'll burn nice and slow through the bowl yeah see, you learn something all the time all right so what this is is actually virginia on a dark fired kentucky core and that's all i know i didn't didn't do a great deal of research on it other than to find out that i was completely wrong about what it was supposed to be With that in mind,
It's still not a very easy blend to sort out. It's very... It's very light. I mean, almost ethereal. I hate to use that word, but it's a word that comes to mind. Like, there's just not a lot of flavor here. There's a lot of smoke. You can feel the smoke in your mouth. It's a creamy smoke, but flavor-wise, it's just kind of bland. And there is a slightly flowery something going on in there. Um... a sweet, flowery kind of edge to it. Some of the reviews I looked at this morning noted um, that it is likely made at McBaron, and I believe it is made at McBaron. Uh, folks said they detected that McBaron honey topping and bite. I'm not getting bite, uh, although I can see how it could bite. I tend to really despise the McBaron stuff, so with a couple of exceptions, Three Nuns being a notable one, because they do make Three Nuns, um, this does definitely have a sweetness to it that I could imagine being called honey, but I've been thinking of that more of a sweetness combined with that flowery component. And again, I was looking for Orientals, so since I now know there are no Orientals here, yeah, maybe it's a topping. But to me, it smokes like a very light Virginia. Um, not bright, but keep in mind it's a couple years old. I'm surprised it's only two years old. I don't remember buying it. I really I had a cigar last night that I have no memory of ever buying. It was in my humidor. Um, I have no idea how it got there. And, you know, folks give me cigars, and that's very kind of them, but I tend to keep them separate, and so I know what I bought versus what has been uh, given to me. And But this was not, this was in the purchased section of the humidor. It's terrible that I have a purchased section of my humidor. Um, and it was, uh, it was a Maduro, which I, I don't typically enjoy Maduros, but it was a Oscar, you know, Leaf and Bean by Oscar uh, Maduro. Fantastic cigar. So, there, in the middle of a tobacco review, you get a cigar um, impression. Uh, in the middle of a tobacco impression, you get a cigar, recommend, cigar recommendation. Should have quit while you were ahead there, Michael. All right. So, yeah, I don't remember where the cigar came from, and I don't remember where this tobacco came from. Terrible. But, with only 2022, Dave, I, I don't know, it just seems like that must be. I wonder if maybe I had jarred it up at one point and then opened it in 2022. But I don't remember smoking it either. Anyway. Enough of me being old and unable to remember things. Uh, very light Virginia. Not bright, uh, but not a deep red Virginia sweetness either. And in terms of the dark fire... If it's there at all, um, it's hard for me to pull out. Really nothing on the retro hill. Other than more of the same. Um, the dark fired maybe is, you know, it's got that uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I hate to say barbecue, but, you know, like that barbecue-y sweet, kind of ketchup-y sweet edge to it often. And maybe there's a little bit of that combining with that floral sweetness I was talking about earlier, but it's really hard to pull that out. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't like to sound like one of these guys, you know, notes who... Notes of damp leather on an autumn evening or whatever. 
but I've been working so hard at this one that I've got <laughs> I've got a lot to say about it, but none of it really makes sense because it's just been it's just kind of flat, and that kind of goes with price point back then. I don't know if it's still true now, but <clears throat> it was talked about as being a budget alternative to Three Nuns, which is the main reason I probably would have bought it. But again, the timeline doesn't make sense. I don't think I would have bought it in 2022 looking for a Three Nuns alternative. So, I don't know. But this is not Three Nuns. <clears throat> it's also not, if you watch the Friday Night Live stream, it's not still could be uh, Luxury Bullseye Flink either. It's just kind of a very raw Virginia Flake. Having said that, it's not unpleasant. You know, it's not in any way... Um, Unpleasant. It's a perfectly fine thing to smoke. And <clears throat> I will probably finish this up. Um, not that I'm looking forward to the next bowl, but I'm not dreading it either. And there's well, maybe more than I thought. I thought I only had about two bowls left, and I might have three or four bowls there. So I'll probably try to finish this up and put the uh, whatever the, the final bowl into my uh, 2024 jar because it's not I guess what I'm trying to say is that you know, on some level I like it because I only put things I like into that jar um, I'm glad I've got the opportunity to smoke it I will not dread smoking another bowl I won't reach for it first unless I kind of make myself do it, you know, it's sort of a special, not a special treat, but a special break from a palate cleanser. There we go. Palate cleanser. Nobody really likes to eat the sherbet, do they? It's just something to get ready for the next course. So. All right, so that's uh, Newminster number 403. Hope, hope that was useful to you. Just my opinions. Somebody else might say it's the best tobacco on the planet, and they would be right for them. So, there you go. What else is going on here? Uh, well, I'm drinking coffee. It's a good thing. Uh, today got off to a rocky start, and I got a lot to do today. All kinds of stuff. Um, darn squirrels have been uh, practicing their, uh, their tree trimming, apparently, because I've got a massive pile of branches that they clipped off the tree uh, yesterday. They weren't there in the morning and now there's just this big pile of branches. That, and I don't think it fell. We haven't had any real storms or wind or anything. So I think it's just, and there's squirrels everywhere. Uh, dogs tend to take care of that, but it's a temporary solution. As soon as the dogs come back in, they're back. I think they're nesting. I don't know if that's true, but usually when they clip branches like that, because they're building nests, and there's been a lot of uh, what I what I like to call uh, squirrel fighting. Although I would have thought they did all their fighting in the spring. I'm a biologist, but I'm not that kind of biologist. I don't really study animal fighting. It's bad enough you have to be logged in and, and uh, or else you can't, apparently if you're not logged in, you can't watch the live stream because, because I've, been, I've been stamped with the adults only thing by YouTube. They sent me a nasty letter about it. I still don't know why. I mean, granted, we do tend to get a little bit off color on that, but it's never... You know, I don't think it's something where you have to cover your kids' ears. At least I hope it's not. But let's not go the same route during the Sunday shows, okay? We'll, we'll try to keep it civil. 
Uh, thus, animal fighting. In case you were wondering where that tangent came from. My goodness. All right, in other news, uh, I got a wonderful gift from my buddy Michael Case. Look at this, guys. This is a beautiful... You might be able to read that there. Miller Falls number four. It is a bullnose rabbit plane. So you you might notice the blade is flush with the edge of the plane right here. What that means is you can take this along a rabbit, which uh, you imagine the edge of a board, and you got a notch in it so that it maybe uh, fits in with another board or something like that. Yeah, it's a little notch in the edge of a board. Uh, for you woodworkers, it's a dado that's missing a side. Like, it's a dado on the edge of a board, so it's a one-sided dado. Uh, this will ride up against the inside of that and let you plane the, the bottom of it smooth. And it's a very useful tool that I don't have, actually. And I love Miller Falls. And this, interestingly, is a Miller Falls 4, but it's got a G appended to it, which, from what I've been able to ascertain, means that it was made, it's a government... Uh, so this was actually made for the U.S. government under contract by Miller Falls. Uh, but everything Miller Falls did was incredible workmanship. So thank you, Michael. This will get used and it will be cherished. Uh, really beautiful. And other news. So garden is pretty much kerpl kerplunked. Uh, Michael actually asked me during the live stream if I could do an update on the garden, and I, I went out yesterday, and it just is a bunch of dying plants. You know, it's that, it's that time of year, unfortunately. But it was semi-successful. We got a fair number of cucumbers, a lot of peppers. No, Well, my wife will very proud, proudly tell you she grew a tomato. It died on the vine, but she grew a tomato. Uh, arugula did okay. Uh, ground cherries really did horrible. The something was eating the leaves and uh, just completely destroyed those. So not the best garden year I've ever had, but it was fun. Already talked about yard work you got to do. Got to pick up those branches and do some general yard cleanup. Got a couple of appliance repair things I've got to do. I've got to take apart our vacuum cleaner because, don't tell my wife, but I might have sucked up a USB cable into the vacuum that needs to be extracted. Um, it's the kind of thing that she'll always tell me, you better be careful, you're going to do that. And I'll say, ah, you're crazy. And then I'll see it getting sucked up, like a piece of spaghetti going in there. Yeah. Just gotta fix that. And it is fixable, it's just wrapped around the um, the roller, and I've taken that roller off, of, well, maybe not a million times, but I've taken it off quite a few times. So, yeah, I gotta do that. And I, believe it or not, I gotta work. I gotta get some work done for work tomorrow. Something that I put off all last week because I would do it the next day and I would do it the next, and then I got to Friday and I was like, oh, I'll have time over the weekend, and here it is Sunday afternoon almost. But right now I think I'm going to go make myself some breakfast, and uh, plan. Always good to plan. So guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the discussion about Newminster 403. Sorry I can't recommend it, uh, other than to tell you what it's like, but, you know, that'll happen sometimes. I'm sure there are people out there that love it because they're still selling it. So I'm going to finish this up, have some more coffee, make a little breakfast, and get on with the day. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday, and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again... I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye, though.